Now that we have a basic understanding down of what a periodic function is, we're going to take a look at angles, and specifically angles in what's called the unit circle. So let's begin with the parts of an angle. On this diagram, this angle is in what's called standard position. And for an angle to be in standard position, its initial side needs to be along the positive x-axis, and it will open counterclockwise around the graph, giving us the angle measure out to what is known as the terminal side, or where the graph end, or where the angle ends. So as we look at angles, we're looking for these characteristics. If an angle were to open moving clockwise from this initial side, it will have a negative measurement. If it opens counterclockwise as shown here, then that is a positive measurement. And angles can be read to have different values of measurements depending on which direction they open and how far you move. Let's take a look at that. The angles that are shown here in this top left hand diagram are the same angle. We can either open a positive 135 degrees or a negative 225. Both of them are the same, so these are what are considered coterminal angles. In the diagram on the right, we have several coterminal angles. We can follow this red angle measurement all the way around counterclockwise and end up with 300 degrees. Or we could take the short path and move counterclockwise and have that be a negative 60 degrees. Another option is that we could do that negative 60 degrees and then do another full lap around. One full rotation is 360, so negative 60 with another negative 360 comes out to a negative 420 degrees. All these are referring to the same angle, so they're all coterminal with one another. In order to move from one angle to a coterminal angle, you either add or subtract one full rotation in order to accomplish that. So in this lower diagram we have a 60 degree angle. What are two other angles that are coterminal to 60? Well if we take our 60 and add a full lap of 360 we come out with 420 degrees. Or, if we were to move the opposite direction, we would come out 60 plus a negative 360 is a negative 300 degrees. So the characteristics here, as shown, are the same as those that we had before. So let's come up with another one. Let's take our negative 300 degrees and do another full lap of it. Another negative 360, so this would be a negative 660 degree angle. All these are talking again about the exact same value. With so many different ways of describing the same angle, there has to be a way of simplifying it down. So typically we look for the easiest angle possible, either positive or negative. And then, when we start looking at values that are included on our angles, we need to simplify it further. So this is where we have what is called the unit circle. A unit circle is a circle constructed in standard position where it has a radius value of 1. And as it sweeps its way around the angle, or the circle, it will always maintain that same radius and it will hit every point along the way. Now different angles are able to be produced from this. For instance, this is a 40, approximately a 45 degree angle. And it will terminate at a coordinate on the rim of the graph. Now due to the nature of our sine and cosine functions. Sine, if you'll remember from your work in geometry, 
sine of an angle, we'll call theta, is equal to the opposite side from that angle, the opposite leg, divided by the hypotenuse. Well, our hypotenuse is always going to be 1, and the opposite side from this 45 is the vertical component of the coordinate. Now, vertical components are simply the y value of the coordinate. Similarly, we could argue that cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, and the adjacent side is the lateral movement, which is the x value. And with having a hypotenuse of 1, all we ever have to concern ourselves with is the x or y coordinate in order to accomplish our goals of finding values for these sine and cosine functions. Now there were a couple of reference angles or easy triangles that we worked with when you were studying geometry that come very handy here. The first of these easy reference triangles was the 45, 45, 90. Sorry, 45, 45, 90 describing the angles of it. And if we were to pick any value theta, we would be able to calculate out what these were. Now, the pattern that existed in these was that the two legs were exactly the same, and the third side was that value times the square root of 2. So if we were to reverse this and have our hypotenuse be 1, then in order to move backwards, we would have 1 divided by the square root of 2. However, as we've studied, you can't have a radical in the denominator. This becomes the square root of 2 over 2. And that will be the same for both sides or both legs. So the sine and cosine of 45 degrees is the square root of 2 over 2. Our other convenient reference angle or reference triangle was a 30, 60, 90. So 60 degree, 30 degree, 90 degree. And what this pattern was, was if our hypotenuse was a set value A, then the short leg would be one half of A, or simply put as one half, since A is one, and our third leg is the short leg times the square root of 3. So in this case, it would be square root of 3 divided by 2. So when we're looking at 30, 60, 90 triangles, or 45, 45, 90, these values become important to remember. So let's take a look at finding some exact values of angles in standard form. What would be the exact cosine and sine values for angles at each of the following measurements? We're going to start these out with a quick sketch. So if we have our basic angle and we go a negative 45 degrees, we reference back to our 45, 45, 90 triangle, and those values were square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 2 over 2, with them being cosine and sine values. Now, we have to take in consideration our location. In quadrant 4, what values are positive and what are negative? Well, we're on the positive x-axis, so we have a positive square root of 2 over 2 for our cosine, and we're on the negative y-axis, so we have a negative square root of 2 over 2 for our sine value. Again, this should be a lot of review material, but being looked at in a different way. So if you need to go back and reference different material, please feel free to do that. Next, let's take a look at our 30 degree angle. So, we have our graph. We're moving out 30 degrees in standard position. Our hypotenuse is 1, and our rise was 1 half, and we had a square root of 3 over 2 for our run in order to achieve that. So our cosine 
of 30 degrees is that lateral movement, square root of 3 over 2. Our sine of 30 degrees is our vertical movement, which is simply 1 half. Moving on, 120 degrees. This, again, will come back to a standard graph. When we put our function, our angle on here in standard form, 120 degrees would come out here. Now, once we get past 90, we start working with what are called reference angles. What would this look like as a standard graph or a standard angle? Because it's 120, it is 30 degrees past the vertical or 60 degrees from the horizontal. So this is going to behave a lot like our 60 degree values. So a 60 triangle will have again our hypotenuse of 1 so our lateral movement now is 1 half and our vertical is square root of 3 over 2. So our cosine of 120 degrees is equal to 1 half but we're along the negative x-axis so it's a negative 1 half. Our sine value for 120 degrees will be that vertical change which is radical 3 over 2. A lot of material in here. Be sure you're copying stuff down. Last one, 225 degrees. If we take a look at a 225 degree angle, that's 180 with some extra. But what is that extra? That extra amount is another 45 degrees. So this is going to behave like a 45-45-90 triangle. As we saw previously, both values are of a form square root of 2 over 2. So cosine of 225 degrees is radical 2 over 2. And the sine of 225 degrees is also radical 2 over 2. But where did we end up with this angle? Well, we're down in quadrant 3, and in quadrant 3, both our x and y values are negative. So, in reality, our cosine of 225 degrees is a negative radical 2 over 2, and our sine of 225 degrees is also a negative radical 2 divided by 2. So a lot of material in here. Go back, review this as needed, make sure you have good notes. We're going to be using these reference angles quite a lot in our study of periodic functions.